All right, so a lot of people have been asking me about my workflow uh, after I shoot weddings and portraits and whatever I might be shooting. Uh, and so I thought I'd do a video of editing raw photos in Lightroom 4. So not many people know me and probably nobody knows me on YouTube because I'm not a big deal. <laughs> but I thought I'd do it just for the heck of it. So, okay, so here we go. Uh, first thing I'd recommend is if you're going to do this professionally, calibrate your screen. Um, I already made a video doing this. This is my second time because <laughs> I messed up on the first. But I went into preferences and showed what the actual stock uh, calibration comes from the factory for the MacBook Pro. And I'm on a 17-inch matte screen. Um, and it's so blue. And I, I wish if I could click this, it would show. And I thought it would. But after reviewing the video, it, it definitely doesn't. It doesn't change anything. So I won't even do it. <clears throat> so first thing I would recommend is uh, calibrate your screen. Uh, and it will be really interesting to hear um, how this may even look on your guys' screens. Because every screen varies. Uh, it's darker. It's more contrast, lighter, anything. And so cooler, warmer. So many different variables. So. It'll be interesting to hear from you guys as far as what yours looks like. Um, but okay, let's dive in here. So I'm gonna take a photo that I took this summer at a wedding and this is already edited. This is what I delivered to the client. And so I'm gonna kind of go and show you what I do to make my photos kind of pop as far as CR, CR2 raw files. Because what I've always heard from friends and people who are starting out are just a lot of photographers is they're really intimidated of working with raw files and if you get the workflow down uh, they're amazing and you'll fall in love with them <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and show you what it looked like before and it's right here this is what it looked like before uh, let me do this real quick so I can just show you uh, not a big difference that's what I edited and that's before um, a lot of noticeable things are obviously vignette over here, here, and kind of here. Um, and that's kind of what I do for a lot of my photos, just to make them pop and isolate the subject. And if you were to look at this at first without seeing the original, you would not really think that this is vignette. You just kind of more think it's the woods in the background that are dark or something. Um, and that's kind of what I try to get to most of my photos to look like. So again, oh, here's before, and it's kind of just, you know, it's it looks decent. It's just a little flat and boring and, you know, it's nothing to go rave about. <laughs> okay, so just to get uh, any questions answered ahead of time, Mark II, 5D, 7200, Mark I, uh, shot at 200, 2.8, 1 400th of a second, and ISO 200. And so pretty sharp, that's raw, out of the camera. No sharpening, pretty pretty impressive. It's a pretty sharp copy, that's why I love that lens. And I shoot it at 2.8 and at 200 almost exclusively just because the compression and bokeh it creates is amazing, in my opinion. Okay, so what I do, or where I start with my photos, is I'll kind of just mess with the exposure. If it's good, which it kind of is. Oh, whoops, gotta reset it first. All right, there's reset, Nothing's nothing's done yet. So. What I like to do is, you know, play with my exposure. If it's where, it, you know, if, it, if I shot it right in camera, which I usually try to do, uh, then, I, then I won't have to mess with it much. But I'll go on to what I do. Uh, so here we go. I'm just going to go ahead. Shadows. Da, 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 da. Go till I like it. Blacks. Let's get that in there. It kind of makes the photo pop a little more. Uh, there's not many things clipping. So I'm not going to really mess with highlights just because it'll take a lot of... It'll make the photo look even more flat, in my opinion. Um, another thing I usually will touch just a little is vibrance. Uh, a little too much, and it'll mess with the skin tone. Not, not a lot of people say it does, but it definitely will mess with the skin tone. <laughs> so I'll just kind of start at 5% or plus 5. And then go down here, grab the greens on saturation, and definitely throw those way up just because I want those to pop in the background. Um, sharpen, I always sharpen my photos a little. Um, just enough to where it's not filmish looking slash garbage, but just enough to make it sharp, even if it's already sharp. Um, vignette 
here's the fun little toy that I love. And I'm just gonna do minus 15 on that and leave it at that and go back up here. Play a little more with exposure. I don't really like how his suit looks. It's kind of still just flat and boring. So I'm gonna go up here in the brush, grab the exposure, bring it down just a tad, and just kind of go over his go over his suit just a little, just to kind of kill it a little. It's a little, yeah, it's just too too light for me. And shadows. I don't want to do too much. That's that's good. Another thing I noticed, his hand looks funky. I don't know why. It looks like a Oompa Loompa hand. So let's see what we can do with that. Maybe just bring down the temperature a little. I love these brushes in Lightroom 4. They're amazing. They, uh, they had them in Lightroom 3, obviously, but they didn't have the temperature tab. And that is very handy when you want to single out people's faces and group shots or something. Okay, so that's decent enough for me. Um... Let's go up here, just do some real quick touching up. I know that's a mole, he'll probably notice, but that's okay. I noticed this, looks like a pre-wedding hickey. <laughs> and uh, that's about it for all I saw there. So, let's see. It's looking good, it still could have a little more pop right here. Um, so let's go ahead and bring exposure up, maybe add some a little bit of contrast, just a tad. And that's looking good, I really like that. I would I would deliver this photo and be very happy with it. Um, so what I'm going to do is show you what it looked like before again. And there it is. Not a whole lot. But it's enough to just isolate the couple and show this big romantic dirty moment off to the world. So uh, what I'll do if people are actually interested is I'll create a, a preset of all this because this is kind of what I mainly do for most of my photos nowadays this right here and so if people are interested I mean every photo is different it's not going to look good on every photo unfortunately um, but I can create a preset if you want and uh, funny enough white balance looks pretty dang good I might add a smidge of magenta nah, nah, maybe a little warmer there nah, too much magenta there we go so that's it before, after, before, after, before, after. Not too much. Yeah, maybe bring the exposure up just a smidge, just like that. Okay, done. Not a whole lot, but it's enough to make it pretty good. Okay, so on to the next photo. Same wedding. <laughs> it was a little crazy. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and just reset it. And that's what it looked like. Not very good. I uh, messed up, goofed up on my white balance. And it's not a big issue if it's shooting raw, but still, if you have something to work off of, like the last photo, I didn't really have to touch the white balance. Um, so if you have something to work off of that's decent, then it helps so much. All right, straighten this photo up. Maybe crop it just a smidge here. Move them over. No. There we go. So how are we going to make this one pop? Looks pretty boring, pretty flat, not warm. So let's just go ahead and start messing with temperature. That's looking decent enough. Now let's make the photo pop. So again, shadows I love. Great, great new tool set right here in uh, Lightroom 4. It's a little different to get used to as far as Lightroom 3, but I love it. So black, so I'm going to add, throw a little in there. Contrast, maybe just 5%, just a little. Vibrance, maybe just a little. Sharpen, just a little. Vignette, absolutely. Now, you gotta be careful, you don't want it to cut into whoever's faces are closest to the edges, which it's definitely doing. So we can change it just a little by adjusting roundness, but it will still kind of affect their faces. So we'll go on there and adjust that in just a bit. Another thing I want to do, grab this gradient brush, go down here, I'm going to create a gradient. It's just kind of distracting down here, this wood. Uh, the, the way the light bounced off of it, it's just a little bright. So I'm going to go ahead and bring it down here and just kind of bring it down. Just tone it down a little. Uh, not a whole lot. That's good enough for me. Okay, so the color, it's still kind of weird. I'm going to just 
play with this. Grab saturation and just bump it up a little. Get a little warmer. Now we're talking. Yep. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah, getting better. Cool. Highlights just down a smidge because they're clipping. All their shirts are clipping a little around the faces, but that should be good enough. All right. So this guy's face. Gonna go ahead and grab a brush, and we're gonna start somewhere and just kind of lighten him up, just so he blends in. Uh, looks like all the other guys at least. And that's good enough. Go to this guy who's just looking extra toolish. Extra creed. Yeah. That's too much. I'm going to create a new brush for him. And that'll be good enough. I don't want much. And let's go ahead and play with this guy's face. Just lighten him up a little because he's the star of the show. And that's good enough for me. So this is a basic edit. <laughs> basic. Oh, hold on. One more thing. Greens. Throw them up. Maybe even grab the hue of the greens and uh, mess with them a little more. There. Yeah. Let's see. Something like that. I like that. Just to make them pop a little more. So this is what I would do. This is what I would deliver to a client. Uh, I'm pretty happy with it. Took a little time, but... Like I said, I create presets for most of my stuff. And if you look up here again, this looks pretty similar to the last photo. Uh, so if you create a preset and you're happy with it, you can apply it to all your photos when you import them and then, you know, make minor adjustments to white balance and exposure and shadows maybe and go from there. So it really helps your workflow. Um, I even think I'm going to put some more shadows in there. Yeah, there we go. And so show you real quick this is what it looked like before and that's after so quite a big difference um it's a lot warmer and again we use the vignette trick to kind of isolate all this huge group of people and you wouldn't really notice it it kind of looks just a part of the photo now um but obviously if you see it before it's like whoa <laughs> it's a lot more bright up here and it's a lot more flat. So <laughs> anyways, thanks for watching. If you're interested in actually getting a preset, comment and tell me what you think. And let me know if it looks like absolute garbage on your screen and hopefully we can make it look better. <laughs> All right. Thank you.